Staph is a type of bacteria that enters the body through cuts and abrasions. The bacteria will cause skin infections that look like pimples or boils. MRSA or MRSA is a type of staph bacteria that can require specific antibiotics for treatment. You can get the bacteria from skin to skin contact, from contact with infected items or surface, from crowded living conditions, and from sharing items like razors or towels. If you have a bump that is red, swollen, painful, oozing drainage, report it to a coach, the school nurse, or your certified athletic trainer. Keep all open wounds covered with a bandage at all times and shower immediately after practice. A concussion is a brain injury that is caused by a bump, blow, or jolt to the head. You don't need to be knocked unconscious to have a concussion. A concussion changes the normal function of your brain. Your brain requires rest to recover to normal and you should never continue playing if you suspect a head injury. You may feel nausea, dizzy, sluggish, groggy, and confused. Often you can have fuzzy vision, a headache, and difficulty concentrating. If you think that you have a concussion, notify your certified athletic trainer, coach, or school nurse. An important part of preventing concussions is to properly fit your protective gear. Whether you play softball, baseball, lacrosse, or football, headgear is your first line of defense against concussion. The helmet should adhere to the following fit standards. The helmet should fit snugly around all parts of the player's head and there should be no gaps between the pads and the head or face. It should cover the base of the skull. The pads placed at the back of the neck should be snug but not to the extent of discomfort. It should not come down over the eyes. It should set two fingers above the player's eyebrows. The air holes should match. It should not recoil on impact. The chin strap should be an equal distance from the center of the helmet. Straps must keep the helmet from moving up and down or side to side. The face mask should be attached securely to the helmet, allowing a complete field of vision and position three finger widths from the nose. Practices in the summer months can be hot. From 1995 to 2001, 21 youth football players reportedly died from heat stroke in the United States. When exercising in hot environments, the core temperature of our bodies can rise to dangerous levels that can lead to illness. We can prevent heat illness with proper hydration. Two to three hours before your sport activity, drink one 20 ounce bottle of water or sports drink. Then 10 to 20 minutes right before your practice, drink another small bottle. As you practice, you will sweat out these fluids, so you should continue to drink during practice. Every 15 minute break, take four big gulps of water. As soon as your practice is finished, replenish your fluid loss with a combination of water, juice, and electrolyte drinks. High sweat output from intense activity causes an imbalance of electrolytes and skeletal muscle tissue. This imbalance causes involuntary cramps common in the legs and abdominals. Treatment is to stop activity, drink oral electrolytes, and stretch the affected group. Heat exhaustion occurs when a person is unable to sustain their level of activity. Sometimes the person will collapse. Your body temperature will be high, your skin will feel flushed or cool, you might have a headache. Treatment for exhaustion is to place the athlete in the shade, administer oral electrolytes, remove excess clothing, and immerse in water. When your core body temperature rises above 104 degrees, you are experiencing heat stroke. You will become disoriented, confused, and dizzy. You might vomit, have a seizure, or even stop sweating. If you suspect heat stroke, call 911 immediately. Treatment for heat stroke requires rapid cooling in a cold tub or with ice packs on the neck, groin, and armpits. Cool the body before transporting in an ambulance, and IV fluids may be needed. Remember, your certified athletic trainer is here to answer any questions you have about athletic performance. Securing an athlete to the spine board is an important skill for all coaches and staff. Even with advanced medical personnel, such as your certified athletic trainer, you may be called upon to assist. Here are some possible scenarios that can arise during sporting events. Securing an injured football player face up. The lead rescuer will secure the athlete's head. This person will direct the other rescuers and will give instructions on properly securing the patient. When spine boarding, the goal is to maintain alignment and minimize movement of the spine. In this scene, the athlete is face up. Rescuers will log roll the athlete toward their bodies on the signal from the leader. Once the board is in place, the rescuers will gently lower the athlete to the board on the leader's count. Then, he is secured with straps to limit movement. Lastly, the head is strapped into place. Securing an injured athlete face down. The lead rescuer will secure the athlete's head. This person will direct the other rescuers and will give instructions on properly securing the patient. 
When spine boarding, the goal is to maintain alignment and minimize movement of the spine. In seen, the rescuers will place the board on their knees. They will roll the athlete toward themselves and onto the board, following the direction of the leader. As they place the athlete on the board, they will gently glide the board to the ground. The rescuers may need to adjust the athlete's placement on the board so he is in the center. Then, he is secured with straps to limit movement. Lastly, the head is strapped into place. Securing an injured athlete pinned against a wall. The lead rescuer will secure the athlete's head. This person will direct the other rescuers and will give instructions on properly securing the patient. When spine boarding, the goal is to maintain alignment and minimize movement of the spine. In this scene, the rescuers will place the board on their knees. They will roll the athlete toward themselves and onto the board, following the direction of the leader. As they place the athlete on the board, they will gently glide the board to the ground. Rescuers may need to adjust the athlete's placement on the board, so he is in the center. Then, he is secured with straps to limit movement. Lastly, the head is strapped into place.